scary video games are the latest craze to sweep the country and most of the world, too. Millions of people are addicted to hours of gazing at electronic images on game screens and arcades and in their own homes. They are video games. They are as American, well, as international as war. In 1981, Americans popped in between five and nine billion dollars worth of quarters and tokens into the slots of arcade video games. Pac-Man alone digested $200 million for its manufacturer, Valley Corporation's Midway. Video games rise as an industry is nothing short of fascinating and unpredictable. From a form of entertainment that was laughed at by news reports, late night talk shows and pop culture throughout the 90s and early 2000s to an industry worth over $80 billion with reportedly more than 2 billion people investing in gaming, as well as it being on the verge of being considered a sporting mega event with games such as Dota 2 and League of Legends selling out the biggest stadiums in the world. This rise happened so quickly that many never saw it coming with the introductions of mobile and online gaming skyrocketing the popularity of the industry tenfold. However, a large and growing amount of gaming enthusiasts believe underneath the surface there is a general decline in both the quality and more importantly the moral practices of the biggest video game developers that are leading to dark and sometimes even tragic events. Microtransactions are in-game purchases that could be made using real-world cash and provide in-game items. This concept was first introduced to the mainstream in 2006, with Bethesda, one of gaming's biggest publishers, releasing Horse Armor for their massively popular game, The Elder Scrolls Oblivion. At the time, this was heralded by many to be ridiculous, as people couldn't wrap their head around why the developers would charge extra for something just as niche and irrelevant as Horse Armor, when it could be included in the game in a free update. However, this was just the beginning of a practice that would spiral into what many have called pure greed. Over the years, this increased from armor to changing your hair color in-game, paying for a new bathroom and even something as simple as the ability to wave or salute. And it doesn't seem to be going away either, with companies such as Electronic Arts earning reportings of over a billion dollars in 2019. Going further into gambling, the popular competitive shooter Counter-Strike Global Offensive caused major uproar after government bodies found that gambling was essentially being promoted to children through the usage of external sites from the game. This was most evident with the popular children's YouTubers Syndicate, a popular YouTuber known for playing children's orientated games such as Minecraft, and T Martin, another famous YouTuber known for playing popular game Call of Duty. They would start their videos by saying, we found this new site despite owning parts of the sites, and would make videos in which they would win items in game worth thousands upon thousands of real world money. We'd rigged odds so that young and impressionable kids would invest in a site which had terrible odds of you actually making a profit. They got away with this by using the excuse of, the items aren't real money, as they had no real monetary value except the price the community gave them. However, the FTC got involved and threatened to take legal action against Valve if action wasn't taken with a lawsuit. Now, my connection to CSGO Lotto has been a matter of public record since the company was first organized in December of 2015. However, I do feel like I owe you guys an apology. I am sorry to each and every one of you who felt like that was not made clear enough to you. And uh, I truly, honestly hope that you guys give me an opportunity to earn your trust back. As for the video game industry nowadays, I believe that it has changed quite a lot because I'll say previously the games are delivered in a way that seems more finished. It's only more excuses, I feel, to be able like the company to get more money and in a way it also leaves them able to like not deliver the full product at the time and have more time to deliver it. For example, the Assassin's Creed bug games that came with a lot of bugs and that was... As for microtransactions and other paid stuff like loot boxes I believe that it's honestly not beneficial to say the least because I believe that if you in deliver the game at the time when you do that's finished and that it has everything it can even be argued that the quality of games have seen a decline over the years with companies such as EA Ubisoft and Bethesda all fighting each year to compete over who can rake in the most revenue a lot of gaming fans have been furious at the various buggy or broken states games have released in, the most infamous of these being Fallout 76. Fallout 76 was developed by Bethesda and seemingly came out of nowhere, yet many fans were excited as the Fallout franchise is beloved by many for its post-apocalyptic storytelling mixed with the beautifully dark environments of a nuclear war ravaged America. However, 
The release of Fallout 76 was nothing short of a disaster, with the game being barely playable for thousands, promised goods that came with the game being misleading or outright lies, leading to now stopped class action lawsuits, and the game company accidentally releasing the public information of all of its most loyal customers who pre-ordered the most expensive versions of said game. Do you consider loot boxes to be a, an, an ethical feature of your games? Kerry? Well, first, we don't call them loot boxes. I think that was... Whatever term you wish to apply yeah, to them, so, do so, you consider them ethical? So what we look at as as surprise mechanics. Nah, um, right. But I think it's important to look at this. So uh, if, yeah. if you go to, if you go to a, uh, I don't know what your version of Target is, but a, a store that sells a lot of toys, and you do a search for surprise toys, what you'll find is that this is something people enjoy. They enjoy surprises. And so it's, it's something that's been part of toys for years, whether it's Kinder Eggs or Hatchimals or LOL Surprise. Um, we do think the way that we have implemented these kind of mechanics, and, and FIFA, of course, is our big one, our FIFA Ultimate Team and our packs, is actually quite ethical and quite fun, enjoyable to people. Loot boxes with a newer evolution of the microtransaction, offering a slot machine-like system where many items can be purchased with a random chance of each one, with some being of higher rarity. Some of these even contain methods for you to sell them off for real-world cash, essentially enabling players to gamble no matter what age with no regulation from current gambling guidelines and rules. As the smart and malicious learnt how to push the envelope on microtransactions, the gaming industry went from selling skins for a horse to gambling loopholes, which caused entire government bodies such as the European Union and Houses of Parliament to debate whether to intervene on possibly illegal practices at play. But for millions of Australians, online gaming is a big part of their lives. And for some, those games are also a pathway to gambling. Worldwide video game gambling is a multi-billion dollar business. It's almost completely unregulated and many underage Australians are taking a punt. For many of them, like 18-year-old Jordan Bruce, the intrigue soon becomes not the game, but the gambling that happens on the side. It's very wide open. Anyone can bet, like a two-year-old who knew how to use a computer could bet. There's, um, all you have to do is click a checkbox that says, I'm 18, over 18 years old, and you can go gambling straight away. Gambling in games like Counter-Strike doesn't involve real money initially. Instead, players can win keys that reveal digital prizes, mostly different weapons used in the games. They can also buy those prizes, known as skins. And skins gambling can be an irresistible lure. So where does the gaming industry go from here? The gaming industry as a whole is doing amazing in terms of profit. However, there has always been a constant looming threat of a crash as the gaming industry crashed hard in 1983 due to customer trust hitting an all-time low with many games coming out with horrible glitches, poor value for money and various other things that made gamers not trust the medium as a whole compared to films and music that were booming in popularity at the time. This haunts developers even till this day as it sent the industry into a hard crash that put a lot of aspiring developers out of business. This is why game developers are more and more concerned with the rise in anti-consumer practices as they walk a very fine line between success and crumbling failure, if public opinion sways just a little to the other forms of media, as games rely mainly on servers which require constant funding from game fans. <laughs>